Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the reconquest and fight the scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastsofwar.com. Keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at beastsofwar.com. Good morning, welcome to The Weekender. I'm Warren. Uh, I'm joined by Ben on the big screen, Justin, and of course your digital concierge, the man who looks after every single need of the community. It is, of course, Lance. Yes, right. Um, I have some quick announcements and stuff uh, I want to make before we get into the show. We have a blinder of a show. Um, we are giving away an Army Painter Mega paint set. We have huge swaths of terrain that we're giving away over the next three weeks. And we're announcing the winners of the Team Yankee uh, live blog. We also have some interviews and just a bunch of cool stuff. Before any of that, a very quick announcement. We're, we're reaching out for another new team member. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, if you are a graphic designer slash web designer who's highly proficient in uh, CSS, HTML5, um, the CSS stuff like L Less and Bootstrap and stuff like that, and you have a reasonable working knowledge, in other words, you know what it is and how it plugs in PHP, WordPress, and stuff like that, please head on over to beastofwar.com because we might make you one of us, which is inherently terrifying, but we need another <laughs> team member. One um, of us. So one we're, we're us. reaching out for a new team member to join the development team, so you'll be working with Lloyd, Tom, Tim, and myself, uh, because I like to, to footer and mix everything up like a big squidgy dough. Um, or and you, you if, come on with a wooden spoon just to stir the pot. If you fancy that, like I said, head on over to the Beast of War uh, website. On the homepage there, you'll see the new team member required. Go in there, and then there's a link to a form where you can tell us about yourself, link to some of the stuff you've done, and then in a, in, after a little while, we'll be reaching out to get in touch with some folk. Right. In other news, this is your last week to participate in Hobby Ween. It is. Ta -da! So, Lance, Hobby Ween finishes on November first. So basically, 1st, yeah. Halloween night it, it ends, and then we'll be we'll be picking some uh, winners and things like that. There are four categories. Yes. What are they? They're murdering miniature, killer kit bashing, terrifying terrain, and paranormal pumpkin. Carvings. Right. Do you want to quickly take us through what they are for anybody that hasn't uh, so, been watching? Murdering Miniature, as we said last week, almost paint anything from Kingdom Death. So it's a, like a little mini painting competition? Yes. Mm -hmm. Best uh, paint wor works for us. Uh, killer Kit Bashing, so creating your own Frankenstein's monster. And Terrifying Terrain, which is anything. I, I'd love to see a gravesite before it ends. Yeah. And Pumpkin Carving. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's really. real life yeah. pumpkin yeah. carving, by the way. Yeah. We are about to embark. So Justin's butternut squash <laughs> from last I, I, week. Yeah, I, I have plans. It has plans. been. It has been. <laughs> he's been carefully, carefully holding it and nurturing yes, I, it. I, I've been studying. I did tell very him very closely. I did tell him. Shit. You know, stop rubbing that. It's not going to grow any bigger. You know, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> stop uh, rubbing you it. Go blind. <laughs> the moment we removed it from its butternut squash patch, it yeah. stopped growing. Okay, okay so okay, it's not okay. going to get any bigger. Okay. okay. One uh, question, Lance. Mm -hmm. For yes. the the killer kit bash, could I make a Franken tank? A Franken tank. Yeah. So what kit would you like to do with that? Kit bash a tank. So take a couple of different tank kits and mash them together. Tell if you, you can, if you can theme it in Halloween some way. I have absolutely no problem with that. Done. Yeah. If you can theme it in Halloween, the, like the killer kit bashing is just really just grabbing all the conversions you can to create some kind of monster of some sort. Uh, yeah. So a monster tank yeah. with tentacles yeah. could be uh, tentacles could be the way. Legs, in my, yeah. In my, instead of tracks, <laughs> yeah. it has tentacles and it kind or, of slithers along. Legs. <laughs> or spider legs. <laughs> oh no, 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 not spiders. Yeah. yeah. You, do you not like spiders? I'm arachnophobe. You're sorry. You're what? Arachnophobic. Are you really? Yes, I Bless get you. spiders. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, I believe we have a couple of examples of some of the stuff that people yes, are, are putting at the hobby. We do. First up, we have a ducking stool by Panzer Kaput. Ducking stools were used back, I don't know how long, but they were used for witch hunting. Uh -huh. And 
It was basically a long pole which they strapped a chair onto, which they strapped a poor woman of uh, witch. witch yeah. Dispenser. So anybody accused of witchcraft, yeah, yeah, they, um, got got into got into one of these, and they dumped them in the river. Yeah, mm. and it, it was horrifying. Yeah, and it, that's where the phrase "ducking hell" came from. Oh, it's yeah. so it is, it is. Okay. Justin, because what they'd do is they'd, they'd get the witches in there, mm -hmm. right? And they, they'd, they'd put the witches in, and as they were going down, they'd start choking, and, and all you would hear is, oh, what the fuck the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, and, and that is scientific fact, by the no, way. No, historical scientific fact. Historical scientific fact. So keep going. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is fantastic. Oh, look water at that! Nice. We've, oh, that is I really. I think this nice. could be implemented into the freshwater terrain, perhaps yeah. as well. Yeah, Panzer could uh, enter that into the freshwater terrain challenge as well. That that's that is seriously nice. Look at the guys at the back. Uh, just holding it up. Mm -hmm. Really, really well done. I feel sorry for the witch, though. Well, it it, it was it was a horrific time. It yeah. was a horrific time. However, it's Halloween, so we don't care. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what next? Second up, we have the creepy cabin by Big Bad Wolf. I think you're going to love this one. The creepy cabin. Okay. To start off, the the cabin is from an old train set. Oh. So we could probably we probably have a few of these are lying around. We the may office. well do. Um, mm. He's picked this up, and I can't wait until he paints it because. He's been creating the interior decoration. Oh, look at this. this. Yeah. That's, nice. that's not all. Wait until you see the wooden floors. Mm. Oh, so he put floors in as well, yeah? yeah? He's, he's oh, created look, so there they much go. Look detail at this. into this. This is awesome. Yeah. And he's, he's separated the rooms out. Uh huh. Oh, I uh, really like where he's going. I love with the this. antlers that he's strung up in the rooftop. Now, this guy is picking up antlers, but I think he's uh -huh. taking it off the model and now he's strapped it on to the, the wall. Mm hmm. Oh, that is so Evil Dead. That is yeah. so Evil Dead. I you can am imagine really... Ash just busting out of that. Yeah, I am really looking forward to, to seeing that finished. Uh, okay. Yeah, very cool. And then what else do we have? We have... Our last example. Last example, which is Mechanicum Abom Abomination by Dead Deal. A Mechanicum <laughs> a Abomination. Abomination, yes. <laughs> okay, so tongue, show me this abomination, tight. Justin. Okay. Oh, look at that. Dave, Dave's pretty known for uh, kit bashing, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, Dave yeah. has proper goth roots, you see. So when it, anything to do with horror, Dave's right in there because he, he he just gets it. And then of course he does love his forty k. Yeah, so this yeah. was this is like a prime opportunity for him. Yeah, that and he loves his uh, his Forge World. So I'm seeing yeah. a few Forge World bits mixed in there. He likes a bit of Marvel. As I, think, well. I think this is in the Doc the killer the killer kit bashing there. Yes. Yeah. Bashing, yes. Okay. Well, um, if you fancy getting involved, you still have a week. Um, please, guys, now start whipping out your butternut squashes and Marlos. your turnips you and your pumpkins. About a pound now. Okay, because you can pick them up for just a few pence now. So I want to see them. I want to see. I want them all whipped out in a line so as we can inspect them all. Okay. So get your get your carvings ready and get photographs of them and get them uploaded. We are definitely doing ours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it, it's going to it's going to be good. I'm just worried because by the time we have ours done, they'll have been you know sitting for like maybe a couple of weeks. They might get a little shriveled. No, you don't. Don't you worry about it. When when you and your butter not squash in this competition, uh, the competition's going to be stiff. Don't okay, you worry okay, about okay. it. Okay. Right. Um, on that <laughs> on that, let me continue on with the the competition this week. Is we have an army painter mega. Paint set. Uh, we have an interview with Army Painter a bit later in the show where they're talking about the the new, yes, the new range. The new range. The other important thing for this is you're getting this mega paint set, which is the updated version mm -hmm. before it hits retail. Ooh, so you get it first. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, oh. it contains 50 war paints, uh, 39 acrylic war paints, five metallic war paints, four quick shade washes, washes, two effects war paints, one triangular handled regiment brush. And one army painter painting guide and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> mm. So, um, as well as that, we also have an interview with Battle Systems, which is coming right up. And uh, our, we have an additional competition prize this week, next week, and the week after. This week, we're going to be giving away the Battle Systems City Block. Next week, we have another one that we're giving away of a different type. And in the week after that, we have yet another of a different type. Mm -hmm. So if you love your terrain, 
these next three weekenders you will not want to miss. Mm -hmm. To be involved or to stand a chance of winning any of these prizes, all you have to do is come on over to bc4.com and post a comment on the show. Something interesting, so we can read it and have a bit of a chuckle or uh, reply to it, hopefully, in uh, the XLBS. Uh, you can also reply to this show and post a comment on YouTube and on the corresponding Facebook post. Yes. Right. Before we uh, bring uh, Colin from Battle Systems into the studio, let me announce a couple of winners. Okay. Um, so we had the Team Yankee live blog for the launch of Iron Maiden. That was the Brits in Team yeah. Yankee. We had two winners. Um, uh, we'll be uh, if you reach into reach into us with the what is it? The claim your prize Go button. Go to dot com. <laughs> yep. Top right corner. There's a contact us drop down with a claim your prize form that you fill in. Yes. Get in touch and we'll let you know what you want. Um, so the two winners are Tinfish. From Beast of War and Ross Moore from Beast of War. Congratulations to both of you. Get in touch. Right. Battle Systems have a Kickstarter that is about to blow your socks off. So give us two seconds. We're going to tell you about some hubs. And we'll get Colin in to show you what they're working on. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hey everybody, so we are joined by Colin from Battle Systems, who you may remember from previous shows for doing beautiful, beautiful terrain. It's that time of year again, it's yeah. the Battle Systems is. Kickstarter. Is. So Colin, the Kickstarter launched yesterday. Absolutely. Okay, it's full on sci-fi this time. Absolutely. So there's, uh, there's, two kind of, uh, there's two kind of kits. Absolutely. You can go deep into the Galactic Empire for a nice, beautiful kind of a clean kit, yep. or go out to the gal Galactic Frontier for something that bit more, well, I don't what, know, kind of grubby. What we have here. Yes. You know, so it's that, that very raw, rough and ready, prefabricated building look to it, which is really nice. Well, we have both kits to show you. Yeah. Mm, all right. So, um, uh, Colin, if you can start taking us through some of the, some of the features of, sure. of this. It's, mm. Well, this is, I mean, as with all of our terrain, this is completely modular. It's ready to game straight from the box. Yeah. So um, there's no there's no painting. We've done all of that work for you. There's no cutting. You just pop it out, clip it together. You build something like this. doesn't have to be this. You can build anything you want. This is mm -hmm. just one example. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, it's ready to game. The, 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 the real key with um, these new sci-fi sets is that we've basically taken everything we've learned over the last three years. We've put it into this. This is true multi-level. Okay, yeah. so you know, rather than just going up onto walkways and the little tiny sort of square bit, this these are individual buildings. You can go so, inside the buildings. You can lift off. Nice, absolutely. Yeah. You can go inside there. You can go under. You can just keep going and keep going. Um, and it gives you so much gaming area yeah. and so much that you can't see when you start the game. Mm. Well, well, it's th this multi-level gaming. Um, it is just such a factor in 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 our games these days. Mm. You know, you need only look at Infinity and the, uh, the skirmish games that are out there. Mm. You know, we've got you have these beautiful. I don't know if you can get in on this. These beautiful kind of walkways mm. and then into the building and up. I think there's even an elevator, like a yeah. Is here. this an anti grav this is elevator? A grab, yeah, yeah, a grav lift. Yeah, it can go up, down. It can go from one building to another building. It can move around anywhere you want. So you've got full access, and you've got stairs, of course, as well. Your miniatures can stand on the stairs. It's great. Yeah. There's also lots of little accoutrements. Accoutrements. Equipment items. Yes, equipment items. That's it. Accessories, sundries. Yeah, we've got. It's yeah. What's this? This is kind of like a react a reactor chamber. It can be anything that you need it to be, basically. Yeah. But it's it's really cool. It's. It's a scenario kind of point, and you can you can take that apart and remove the central column. So you've got these um, like really nice struts and stand the miniature in the middle and yeah. have it for something else. So there's a lot there's a lot to play with with that particular it, uh, item. It feels kind of XCOM to me. You know, whenever yep. you had the enemy within with the soldiers going into the tanks. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Really cool. Yeah. I'm just uh, cycling through some uh, some other kind of pictures and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, uh, of the of the 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 actual set. So here we have a here we have another view, Colin showing 
the the stairs and some of the beautiful control panels in this. Absolutely, yeah. We, we we've actually spent a lot of time um, getting the, the the images for like the control panels and all that kind of stuff, just just where we need them to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see we've got these lovely um, sort of uh, four piece connection parts with screens on it. We've got these huge, great big command screens, mm -hmm. um, and they're the screens that come with this set. They're very they're, the genre fits this set, but the galactic mm -hmm. set would have something different, you know. Yeah. Um, and so uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's... Just look at that. <laughs> Isn't that just fabulous? And it's uh, one of the, one of the interesting things. I'll just go back a uh, back an image here. Mm -hmm. On this image, you can see kind of uh, little cables and stuff like that. That's all in the texturing. You're not, you're not applying cables or anything like that. No, no, this. no. Th this, this, this frontier set is all about the sort of gritty. You've got conduits. You've got sort of cables running from ducts. Mm -hmm. This is a really used area. Yeah. It's a used universe. You know, the maintenance men have gone. You know, wars yeah. hit, and uh, it's yeah. strong. It's reliable. But um, yeah, it's not tidy. It's effective. Yeah. Um, uh, some more shots of the the control panels here. Yeah, we've got we've got our our, our new command table, so you can have yeah. like the outlook of the galaxy. You know, this is like you know iPad on steroids in the future. I'm guessing mm -hmm. with all the controls around the cargo crates are in the background. We've got three dimensional struts. We've got um, yeah, everything's interactive basically. Yeah. See, I, I look at this and. At the minute, I'm going through a, a drop fleet commander phase, and I'm <laughs> yes. looking at this and imagining, could I set this up like a spaceship bridge and actually really zero into that bottom level where it's just mm. like a squad-based game for drop drop zone? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm looking zone. at it from the perspective. I, I don't know. Some of you guys are definitely still waiting on your pledges. I understand this, mm. but uh, but the uh, colonial marines versus aliens. Mm. Mm. You know, this is this is just totally setting itself up for for something like that. Or if yeah. you're a dead zone player, you know. The, it's just uh, anything for the Warpath universe is yeah. just going to fit right in. Warpath on this, no problem at all. Absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, AVP, no problem. Now, one of the other things is corridors. <laughs> just uh, just look at this. I have a couple of shots of corridors here mm -hmm. that just totally bring it to life. The, the quality of the textures, Colin, is just getting better and better. We've learned a lot. Um, you know, I'm getting a better artist, basically, because I'm doing this all the time, you know. Yeah. So, um, and we got asked for, um, we got asked for corridors. Um, we've always had corridors, but now there's so much three-dimensional items. The texture does the rest. Yes. Um, and we asked for, you know, even for very, very small corridors, and we've got that now as well. We've, we've gone down to half walls, so you can have really tight, you know, backwards, mm -hmm. almost alleys, if you like, in, mm -hmm. in your space centre. And it, 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 there is a lot of three-dimensional aspect to this. Like, you, you take, for example, on this, yeah. the, the, the kind of the vents yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not only about the, the, the textures on the components. The components themselves are adding even more texture to the environments mm -hmm. and just making the, the, the environments just look so much more interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you can take cover behind this. You've got these uh, CO2 scrubbers, and you can you can hide a miniature behind there, um, and that's cover. And so many games now rely on cover. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. I, I am noticing one thing that you showed me earlier that I want to quickly show off on the camera. Mm -hmm. So see the little crate? Yes. It's a crate. It, it does what it does. It's a crate. It holds stuff. Mm -hmm. But you've actually designed them so that they'll pop open and be fully textured inside. Oh, you are kidding me. I didn't yeah. realize they were textured inside. <laughs> so you can fill them up. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking booby traps. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thinking, you know, oh, what's in here? <laughs> well, um, we have some more shots there of uh, looking at it from the, the top down. Again, that's really showing off that kind of multi-level play, Colin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, know, so. yeah, exactly. You know, and like like you said yourself, games are moving into multi-level as well. And you've got you can see here, Dead Zone. You know, mm -hmm. it works perfectly. You can have miniatures on stairs. There's ladders. There's everything. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, you also have this curved effect that yes. I'm really, really liking now. Okay. Um, uh, where you have it, it's almost like this curved paneling. It's like the inside of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> were you were you at <laughs> all inspired by that? <laughs> I think I've forgotten more about Star Wars than most people know, so I, I, I'm sure there's going to be an influence in there. Yeah, this, this, these are called struts. These, these struts, and you can put them. You can have them coming off the side of your spaceship, or your, you know, your, your station interior, or you can join them together in the corridors, as we've seen. Yeah. Um, really, really good. And we've even some of the doorways have been curved as well. So we've, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, that's going to add a, a nice bit of stability and strength to like end walls and stuff like yep. that. Yeah. Which is going to be yeah. really good. And, and again, anything that breaks up, because the danger is uh, things start to look square. But uh, what we have here is because of the, the different kind of the textures, all the different shapes and, and yep. stuff, and the way it layers mm -hmm. 
over one another. Absolutely. You, know, it, you, you don't end up with that potentially very boring square pattern. You know, there's just mm -hmm. so many different ways that this can, can go together. Absolutely. I mean, really cool. we worked so hard to get this to become more realistic so that when you look at it, you, you, you don't see card. Yeah. You see, you just see the space station. You mm -hmm. know, I want everybody to be completely immersed in their game, but not to be, you not to have limitations by yeah. the, by it's, their setup. It's those epic backdrops we talk about. You know, if you have an epic backdrop to your game, your immersion levels just go through the roof. Yeah, well, absolutely. And again, you know, the game, the the game is all about getting down, <laughs> <laughs> looking at them from the yeah. model's eye perspective. It just it just changes absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, we have a couple of pledges that, that we want to show. This, what you're looking at is is the Frontier Pledge. Absolutely, yes? yeah. Does it come with the nice map? And... It does. Uh, yeah, everything you see there, everything we've got on the table here comes in just in the base pledge. Mm. We just, you know, we don't hold anything back when we start. It, it all goes in. This pledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you you can you could go big pretty quick with this. Yeah. Right. Well, this is the frontier set. We're going to take a we're going to take a very quick swish because we have the galactic set as well, which I'll just bring up for you to have a look at, which is uh, your more high sci-fi polished kind of look. So let's let's see what things look like in the galactic center. Welcome back. We have the galactic pledge. Bring her up, Justin. Beautiful. So it's obviously it's obviously a lot cleaner uh, this one, Colin. Absolutely, yeah. Um, if the frontier if the frontier set is you know furthest from the galactic core, this is right in the center. So you've got these nice white, clean, plasteel kind of panels. Yeah. Um, it's still used. It's quite Mass Effect, isn't it? It, it has that Mass Effect feel. It, cer is... it, it, it certainly does. It certainly does. Uh, it's not super pristine. You know, if you look mm -hmm. up close, the textures you can still see it's a used environment. There's a bit of dirt on the fans yep. and so on and so forth. But this is, yeah, this is a bit more modern. Now, does it come with exactly the same um, ground texture and stuff like that? What, what is does... what is different and what's the same? Okay, so basically, what's what's different is the uh, mostly the walls okay mm -hmm. so you've got this really strong touch of the walls and that just dramatically changes the set mm. the great thing is the items like the cargo crates and many of the items uh, don't need to change because they work yeah. so well um, some of the consoles that we've got down the front here you know they're a so different these? yeah absolutely you know so we've got more of a genre fit kind of console there mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which which again feel you know a lot more iPad-y sort of touch yeah yeah um, the actual design of these you've got some really interesting shapes going it's on lovely the, the, yeah. the shapes that are in it, it, it they've been really it's those curves me. again yeah, we have we have some uh, some pictures. I'm just going to cycle through, Colin. So yeah. if you can tell us what we're looking at. So. Yeah. So here, obviously, these items here, these are the same. These are cargo crates, but this this is the plasteel, this kind of like plasteel mm -hmm. kind of image across here. We've got some really nice curves. Um, things like the lift and everything else stays the same. Um, uh, the game mat is also. It is the same game mat, and it works perfectly on there. Yeah. Uh, and again, but we might we might upgrade that. We might do something as 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 we get through the Kickstarter. We might have some fun with that game mat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Well, because um, um, one of the things I can see, I'll just while I'm bringing up another picture, Justin, is mm. um, I, I can see this particular set with uh, green areas. <laughs> do, you, do you want kind of Elysium kind yes, of a when thing? They're actually uh, up on, yeah, you know, where you're, you're coming into a space station and there's maybe Central Park running up through the middle of it yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. you have your benches and That'd consoles cool. and it's all that very Mass Effect Elysium kind of space station Definitely. type thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that just totally does it for you. I just look at this. <laughs> I was dreaming about this with that very effect with the with a, a segment of grass mat and some trees and stuff Aye. in it and it just well, I mean, just like, total space station you remember years ago we did some some sci-fi planters mm. something like that just popped in through here would look really good yeah it just it, it just would give it as an entirely different feel again mm. so here we have uh, I love these chairs mm. <laughs> <laughs> there's such a tiny little detail but if you uh, zoom in there onto uh, this yeah, you got, can actually of them it just here. looks so cool uh, and they actually look they are properly in scale, which is yeah, they are indeed. It, the furniture makes it; it just mm -hmm. it fills the world up. Now, moving on, mm -hmm. I've got some corridor shots here again for you to have a look at. Mm. Uh, it's just the the confinement that this kit can give you. It it makes the game so much more fun because you have to think tactically. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can get stuck. You know, you might not be able to get out, and it will be a it will be a firefight. Mm. Absolutely. 
Now, are these consoles different from the consoles that you get in the other Pledge, or are they the same? Yeah, what we've done, we've mixed them together here. So at mm -hmm. the front, you've got the consoles from the uh, the Frontier set, and here yeah. we've got the Galactic consoles as well. Mm -hmm. And we've got it on this kind of like you know anti-slip rubber, yeah. you know, um, oh, the texture you've got the on textures, some of these. absolutely. Yeah. And that you get those in both sets, but they're reversible. So if you've got Frontier, you've got a more of a dirty top, and if you've got you know, oh. you know, uh, there's a lot of reverse reversibility to all of our terrain really yeah. but uh, you know with this it works really really well I suppose that's the other thing it's worth uh, worth saying as well is that all of the interiors are textured as well yeah absolutely so whenever you look at the interior of any of these rooms or anything like that all the textures um, there. are absolutely. there yeah without a doubt I have one one final shot again of our chair yeah and again curves in there mm -hmm. yeah just to give it that yeah, we want, you know, uh, close to the Galactic Hub, it is a little bit more sort of uh, ergonomically friendly. It's a little, mm -hmm. all curves and sort of fluffy, fluffiness a little bit. And like this this new sort of desk um, computer panel, you can spin that up and it can go on the wall so it can work in two different directions again. See, I like oh, the fact that... I think it, we have that actually uh, there. Yeah, yeah. If you, I think if you zoom in there, in yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah it. you can just see it there. Yeah. yeah, it's a very, very cool little piece. But you see, I like the fact that you're building in sort of like miniaturized narratives to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is someone's workstation. You know, you can place yourself in the world with that little type of thing. Well, it can, and cool. you can build it into your games because yeah. they become the actual objectives. You've got to get to this control panel. You've Absolutely. got to get you to have this. X number of control panels to yeah. actually try and hack. It means yeah. you're not you're not sticking on weird kind of counters and things like yeah. that. There, you have items to use. In the past, what we'll do, we'll have a battle table, and you know, your objective is to go and destroy that battle table. And mm. when you get to it, you can slip the, you know turn it over and then mm. the then the textures are a broken battle table we mm. had we you know we still sell turbines that you can reverse you can have them pristine or you can turn them around and have them damaged mm -hmm. you know yeah. that's your objective you don't need a counter you just adjust the terrain while you're gaming now that's before nice. we before we came on air i was saying to colin about my dream of the mm -hmm. uh, of the grass and he says well you you weren't the first to, to, to think of that and um, i have a, have a picture because this stuff works equally well even as exterior buildings just look mm -hmm. at that justin it's, Isn't that lovely? Yeah, we're seeing Frontier and Galactic here. Frontier on the left, Galactic Absolutely. on the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you know the clip system is so modular that you can make these external buildings. And those same curves that were in the corridors, mm -hmm. we're using those as like external struts, supports yeah. for the building that hold yeah. them down in all sorts of weather. Uh, it, it, it feels very, very real world when you're doing that because mm. you, know, you imagine that if you're actually going to a planet to set up a research station, you're going to flat pack it. Yeah, and then it, it comes out and it's all here's the cool thing about here. this yeah. right and one of the cool things about battle systems kickstarters mm. is they have probably the funnest kickstarters of all the <laughs> kickstarters mm. they have got this crazy big crew of dedicated followers mm. who get in there and it's like a 30-day party <laughs> where they're, they're, there's comments and ideas and stuff flying around the whole time the community aspect around your kickstarters is extraordinary mm -hmm. yeah and this is the, this is the band and the community of people who took the science fiction set yeah. And ended up getting it to the stage where it upgraded into full castles. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I can totally see um, me and you doing a game, right, yeah. where you have a big external building like that, mm. but it's all internalized as well. You mm. just start lifting lids off, mm -hmm. and we can play on the outside, and then start to play our way through, yeah. and it it just works. So you, yeah, you, yeah, you could do full tactical insertion games. Yeah, I I, I just uh, I I just look at it, and the mind boggles. Mm. With, with the with the possibilities of it. So if you're getting on that Kickstarter again, you guys, get the exterior stuff going. I want to see more <laughs> exterior options and things and Definitely. and park benches, sci-fi park benches, please. <laughs> <laughs> Speak to us in the comments because that's where we generate our ideas from. Yeah. And you know, many of the stretch goals that we hit um, are generated from the comments. Mm. So you know, we have made medi bays and things like that because people said, look, we want a medi bay. Yeah. And so I've drawn it, designed it, prototyped it, shown it before the Kickstarter's over, mm. and we made it a product to buy. And nice. uh, it came came to, you know, it came to be. So if, it, if this is inspiring you, now is a good time to get into the Kickstarter, get into those comments with your ideas, Absolutely. because who knows yeah. what you guys could generate by, by the time it's over. I, I like the organic nature of the Battle Systems Kickstarters, because... Uh, the castle came out totally out of left field for me during the, <laughs> uh, the, the fantasy Kickstarter, and it, I was blown away by it, and it looked great. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really, really curious as to see um, how other people take this and then reimagine it themselves and say, well, actually, Colin, if we yeah. can do this, yeah. 
we have this and this and this. We have got a great community and they, mm -hmm. you know, once the Kickstarter's over and they've delivered on, you know, we've delivered uh, all, of our, um, all of our items on time. Uh, we basically, the community just start flooding pictures in and I'm constantly seeing things. I'm thinking, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Well, you know, why didn't I build that? You know yeah. what I mean? So uh, it's brilliant. Well, uh, there's something I have sitting in front of me here. Yeah. yeah. And is th this, I assume, is not in the core set, yeah? It's not in the core set. Yeah, for an example of stretch goals, it could be kind of a, you know, uh, a kind of a transporter, teleporter type thing. It's a big scenario piece yeah. that you could put in a big old room. Yeah, but um, even that... Drop it oh, in there, Justin, for oh, me. No, right? so Just, uh, yeah, I was I was actually trying to move some of the stuff out of the way to actually make room for it. All right, it's, it's a little huge. bigger than I thought. Yeah. So let me just get this, 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 and we'll move these back a little. Okay. And this should now fit almost. Almost. Uh -huh. On here. Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine your objective is to fight your way yeah. through into. And then through this space station yeah. to get to this area. Once you're there, you can teleport. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you're going to go. Maybe from the frontier to the galactic set, or the galactic yeah. to the frontier set. You know. Yeah. And I, I, I love it. I like love it. That, that's gnarly. just. And again, it, it's not square. Do you know? Yeah. It's using shape and and you know it, it, the whole thing to break up the squareness yeah. of stuff. I Absolutely. love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. Cool. So. Have you ideas for for stretch goals? Can we squeeze a couple of ideas out out of you at this stage? What what might we see? Or well, you... we the, what was really popular with the original sci-fi, medi bays, docking bays. You oh, know all these bays. kind. You know the big we had we had the big docking bay where the you know the drop ship or whatever can come flying in into a mm -hmm. big area. So mm -hmm. we're probably going to revisit some of those yeah. because they are they were literally sold out in a matter of weeks after the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, once we delivered. Um, uh, I'm working on uh, a research center at the moment so mm -hmm. that you've got, um, you know, these kind of quarantined areas with the updated sort of gurney medic medical mm -hmm. beds and sort of, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's some stuff I'm working on anyway because it's just got to be in here. I'd, you I'd know. like to see some mining facility stuff. I think some that mining. would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been looking at it and uh, I'm, uh, I, as I said, I've seen Space Station, but quite easily you could see Spaceship. So maybe maybe the bridge, but I'm already thinking I could create a really cool bridge of a spaceship just out of the bits that's in this set. I've so. got uh, in the studio back home. I've got uh, I've got a really big sort of wall where mm -hmm. I do a sketch and I stick it up there. Yeah. And very slowly I take the sketch and I move it to the graphics tablet. Yeah. And it realizes one of them is a a really nice command center. So you've got the bridge of a spaceship Ooh. with angled forward walls. Yeah. And the way it's going to work is that you know whether you've got just one of these sets, Galactic or Frontier, or whether you've got both. Um, because it's external, we'll have it reversible, so you can take that one, and if you and it will work in either of the sets. Mm. Lovely. Nice. Lovely. Right, it's on Kickstarter now. Guys, go and check it out. Check out the Kickstarter videos and, and everything else uh, that, that's going on there. Mm -hmm. We have one last little cool feature to show you guys. Though. It's, um, so uh, we were talking about external buildings, yep, Colin. Absolutely. You have a kind of a plan in mind of where this kind of external building kind of concept can go. Definitely. Uh, our terrain is all about modular. You know, this will ultimately pack down into its box now yeah. because of the way that we've designed it, the way we've evolved it. Um, and my, my idea is that we could have, you know, on your bookcase, you could have DVD, DVDs, Mm -hmm. You know, boxes, basically. Mm -hmm. And each one of those has got a building in it. Um, and you're going to go around your mates and have a game. Will you... a building fit, will it pack down into a, yeah, a space so, that's small? Something yeah. about this kind of size, basically. Ooh, this this is an 11, me, 11 uh, millimeter. Let Throw me this just slide this you. over towards me a little bit. Okay, right, so. so everything's going to fit into this, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Well, what not, size not from the set. What no. size of building mm -hmm. would roughly fit into that column? Okay. So here we've got a, an example of a building. Okay. All of that, um, all of that there, yeah. will fit oh, in that eleven millimeter that. DVD case. And you know what? Not only that, there's some stairs there which I haven't brought. So yeah. you can add some stairs that go that run down the front of the outside of that building mm -hmm, as well, yeah. um, and maybe a couple of other bits and pieces. And again, it's a building that you can go inside. You know, mm -hmm. you can get inside it, yeah, and so it's all textured and, and so on and so forth. So it's um, and it's yeah. reversible. Uh, yeah, well, with this one, yeah, the, the way we've done this, this would work with the frontier set because we've got frontier textures inside, but we've yeah. got this this very hard line, you know, uh, weatherproofed external mm -hmm. sort of white plastic, you know, yeah. uh, uh, really cover to it cool. as well. That's really nice. So 
basically you could have lots of different types and shapes of buildings and purposes of buildings. Absolutely. Um, I could have my DVDs on my shelf. I'm going over to my mates. I pack my mat yeah. or whatever gaming surface we're going to play on. Yeah, yeah. I'll go stick maybe five of these into yeah, a bag with you. That building, that building, Two, that three, building, five. That yeah, absolutely. Boom. Bump yeah. them in in my bag. Yeah. Head on, head on over. And then spend, spend a few minutes, minutes built up. Yeah, each yeah. building takes you know a few minutes to build a building, put it together, yeah. and you can you know look look how you move it, how easy it is to move around. You can stick it over here, yeah, you can well, stick it over like, there. Yeah. I you grab go, this and it, <laughs> <laughs> I drop it, but you can just you can lift it whenever yeah. it's together. You know, it's yeah. a solid piece. Yeah. But the the key here is that it it completely flat packs. Yeah. There's no glue holding any of these things together. So that's what separates it from. Like the HDF terrain and stuff, because with the HDF you end up gluing it. Yeah. Um. It, it this stuff here because of the clip mechanisms and stuff that you've uh, created for this, mm -hmm. you can just end up flat packing yep. the whole thing, mm -hmm. put it back in its DVD box, and you have like an entire city. Absolutely. In this yeah, much on of DVDs. Yeah. And it's and it's super strong as well. We've done so much testing of this. We've chucked things downstairs. Um. We've you know we've set a building up and stuck five kilograms of weight through the bases of miniatures inside the buildings to try mm -hmm. and collapse them and the scale just maxed out of five kilograms yeah. we've taken like little bridges you know because people are always worried about cardboard but we take little bridges we piled it up with more minis you know than you can fit on it until they're spilling over the edge <laughs> we've 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 tested everything that's your zombie games right there <laughs> so <it's> like <laughs> you can drop this on the floor basically and it bounces mm -hmm. so you know um that's the beauty as well it's um it's it's so easy to use Right, well, Very Colin, look, good luck with the Kickstarter. Thanks we'll, very much. We'll call in with Colin again about halfway through the Kickstarter to see what's been unlocked. So we'll we'll do a we'll come back to it again. But if you're interested, definitely head across to the Kickstarter. Links in the show notes and uh, get involved. There's a there's a fabulous community built around that there, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with this year. Mm -hmm. Right, let's tell you about some hubs. It's time for 28 millimeter World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. Flames of War brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to the hub on beastsofwar.com to find news, tactics and tutorials about the game. Well, another mad Kickstarter coming from the it's guys looking at like It's going to be really cool though. Star Saga's just finished. Yeah. Did really well, actually, at the end. Yeah, yeah. And now we've got a Kickstarter of something that is, looks absolutely perfect for playing Star Saga on. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's, you know, it's like the gods aligned in this one. Um, be sure to go on over and uh, check the Kickstarter out. And as we can bring you updates, uh, remember, they'll be on beastofwar.com. Right. A time for a, a bit of a whirlwind tour of some of the, the interesting things that have happened this so, week. What's been happening in the news this week? He did the jingle. Nice. <laughs> ben, um, we're going to kick off with uh, Heraldez's new masterclass book. Yeah, so um, his second volume is now sort of up up for pre-order from Corvus Belly and things like that. Uh, so this will be available until November the 14th. Um, there's loads of interesting stuff in here as well. You can um, check out a little bit of a uh, trailer that they put together, um, showing off some of the different techniques and things that he's going to be doing here. He's using all sorts of different models. Obviously, a lot of them are from uh, Corvus Belly and Infinity. So we're working on things like armor and flesh tones and all sorts of different things yeah. as well. Um, if you actually pre-order from... Corvus Belly, uh, then you can get your hands on an exclusive miniature too. So there's the Imperial Agent Crane mini, rank as well. Yeah, yeah. That nice. is a fine looking mini, I gotta say. Yeah. And look at the detail on the cloak. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, really like that. Well, you see, I, I kind of have to guess that Carlos may have had his hand to designing this one because uh -huh. his sword is stabbing into the head of a Neoterran bolt into the helmet of it. Got Bostria, up. are you behind this? <laughs> <laughs> When's it available, Ben? Is it, it's available now, so anybody who's interested can go on and, and take a take a look at this, yeah? Yeah, pre-orders are available now until November 14th, and then it'll be available after that, so yeah. Cool. Okay. As you'll know, this week uh, this weekend past um, was Eschen Spiel, and uh, one of the great pieces of news that came out of Eschen Spiel, and there was a ton of it, was Pandemic Season 2 sneak peak. Now this is Pandemic yeah. Legacy, Ben. Tell us a bit about what we what we find out. Okay, yeah. So um, they were there talking about Pandemic Season Two. And obviously, Pandemic Legacy is a massive game. Went to the top of the charts on BGG. Uh, huge, huge game uh, that had a really nice sort of narrative flow to things that was going on. And what we found out from uh, Essen Spiel 
last p- past weekend was that season two is going to be carrying things on from a little way down the line in terms of where the storyline was going and stuff like that. Yeah. So we'll be looking at this from the uh, the angle of like the survivors and things and stuff like I don't want to spoil too much just in case you haven't actually, you know, played through Pandemic Legacy, mm-hmm. but it's going to continue the story in a different way. So it'll be very interesting indeed. We actually got to look at the, um, the board as well, or at least a prototype version of it instead. And um, we've actually taken a couple of cues from C4, which is the other Rob Davio game that he came out with. Yeah. where it looks like you'll be revealing the tabletop as you go and sort of peeling back stickers effectively Ooh. and look at different parts of the world. So it's almost got this sort of semi-post-apocalyptic feel to it, which sounds yeah. quite interesting I mean, indeed. So yeah, We're cool. massive fans of the legacy format in here. The, the, yeah. the, legacy, the legacy format for board games, though, is just superb. And it's, mm. it really is that, that step towards video gaming in our marketplace yes. though isn't it, 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 yeah. it it's brilliant and then with this being pandemic i know you're a huge fan massive fan of pandemic M- myself and the myself uh my other half andrea love playing band- pandemic and the, if you're um we love it because it's a cooperative game yeah. um uh, which you know if you're if there's only a couple of you playing cooperative games i find actually are a lot more fun because you win or lose together yeah um, yeah where yeah. and often if you have if you have someone in your household or whatever that maybe doesn't game just as often, um, sitting down to play a game of chess or, or or even a tabletop battle game, I've got to say is not it, it it's not an awful lot of fun if they don't get the practice in. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's where games like um, Pandemic Legacy just absolutely come into their own mm-hmm. because uh, you can play together. You can you can pitch in some advice and stuff to uh, to uh, the other player yeah. and say you know I think we should do that. But ultimately you know you're, it's their decision. Yeah, but, um, you can but lay you're out doing the it together. A lot better. Yeah, you know if you're playing against each other, you're not going to say well you could you could get that get that get that get that mm-hmm. and they'll go well which which one should I get? I don't know. Yeah. The yeah. thing that really impressed me with the legacy games is that you can approach it from two different sides as well. Because you can obviously look at it from the sense of it's just a board game and you mechanically play your way through it. Mm-hmm. Or you can come at it from more of a role playing angle. Yeah. And you can come back and think, so what would my character do in this situation? Because yes. you get to add a lot of different character and sort of wounds and things to this character as the game goes on. So it's interesting to explore it from that sort of story angle as well as just, you know, a basic board game. Yeah. If you, if you haven't done it, um, definitely put Pandemic or Pandemic Legacy top of your Christmas list um, yeah. because it, it's a great game uh, for the the older ones in the family. Um, so you, so anything from like twelve years up are going to have a load of fun. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, next up, we have a Ro- Romans and Germanic tribes. Justin. Yes, from Warlord for Heal Caesar. So we've got some some new stuff showing up here. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing in this first picture is Caesarian Romans for a starter army. Look Mm -hmm. at that. So it's really nice because you've got Caesar on the horse. You've got him, I think, on foot as well here. And you've got a scorpion, which was one of the most deadly weapons in history. Well, tell me about it. Uh, basically, this thing would fire a gigantic bolt at you. Think of it like a, a gigantic crossbow yeah. firing yeah. A, a huge yeah. arrow straight at you. Why did they call it a scorpion? Uh, I don't know. I just remember from playing Rome Total War 2, that's what it was named in ben, there. Ben, do you so know any know. ideas for why they called it a scorpion? I think it was because it lo- it had the look of one, So, and the idea of it was that the, the bolt itself was fired from the back of the of the artillery piece so in that sense it was like almost like the sting in the scorpion's tail yeah and this is only from my time commander's knowledge though so mm-hmm. i'm sure someone will correct me on that <laughs> if you know why they called it a scorpion there's your opportunity to win an army painter paint set and, and the great terrain bubble exactly yeah. from uh, battle systems yeah okay what else we've got germanic tribes yes oh they're clothed justin no do you want to know my biggest problem what they're square base ranked they should be in a messy horde Right. You know, and a big ball of death and doom and But they look like a big ball of death on the square base. Uh, yeah. They're a little too regimented for me. It would, it would be nice if we could get in a bit closer. So, Warlord, send us bigger images so yeah. as we can, uh, well, we can get in and have a Speaking of getting out. closer, oh, we've look got some of the heroes. This one. So, uh, right, who's this guy, Justin? Go have a, a go. Gallic Kilt Chieftain. Yeah, what's his name? Not going to say it. Go on, have a go. Versintorix? Versingetorix. 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 Yeah, uh-huh. I'll do. I think he looks a, he looks a, a tad like yourself, Justin. I've got to say. No, no, no. My beard's never that magnificent. And there's um, Arophistus. Ariovistus. Yeah, yeah. Ariovistus. <laughs> uh-huh. With his dogs. And I think, yeah, here we have Julius Caesar, and then it's Mark Anthony. Yeah. That one I can pronounce. 
Absolutely. <laughs> so if you're interested in unleashing hell on your tabletop, and I know Lloyd is mad keen on the Romans, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, go and check that out. Okay, final bit of news uh, before we uh, sit down with Army Painter. Actually, actually, you want it closer shots yeah. of some of the Germanic stuff? Oh, have you got it? Ta-da! There we go. Well, there's Caesarian Cavalry to begin with. Uh-huh. And then here, is this more? Yeah, that's the Germanic Cavalry. Yeah. Nice. That is really nice. Cool stuff. Okay, awesome. moving on. Right, finally, we have um, Studio Tomahawk announcing the uh, Arthurian, yes. Arthurian, Arthurian saga yes. supplement. So this is, this is King Arthur and Lancelot. It's got to be, yeah? Yeah, so this is them sort of bridging the gap between the, the fall of the Roman Empire and what was what what then became Anglo-Saxon England after that. Yeah. And so this is the period which has got a little bit of mysticism tied to it, as you say there, with King Arthur. And then it's also got a lot of historical sort of nuances to it as well. But this will clearly this will be looking at it from a slightly more historical angle. So they won't be the shining knights of the French poems and things like that. They'll be the Romano British commanders and stuff like that. So it'll be Arturius and things rather Shall than. Shall they you know, be stuff. farting in your general direction? That's what I want to know. <laughs> there might be a little bit of Monty Python in there as well. Well, I've got to <laughs> say, looking at this, I don't know how it would be possible not to to play this and think to yourself, run away, run away. Robin Hood on I have seen, I, um, I don't know if we can find them or whatever, but I have seen um, uh, somebody did the, the Monty Python Holy Grail miniatures yep. at one well, point. One of our mates at the club has them. Mm -hmm. yes, they're they are by a company called Studio Miniatures, as far as I remember, uh -huh. and they did them for their sort of Hollywood horror-themed uh, gaming and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, Absolutely. So, so um, when, is the, when is the supplement coming out, Ben? Do we know? Uh, we're not quite sure yet. It'll probably be sometime next year at this rate, but the way that uh, Studio Tomahawk Tomahawk are going to be approaching it is they're going to be coming out with a series of different articles talking about the different chapters in the book and also an overview of the of the book as a whole to sort of get you into the mood to be playing Arthurian battles and things yeah. so and there are loads and loads of different ranges out there that already supply Arthurian stuff um, we talked them about them a little bit before but Foot Sword do a huge amount of Arthurian uh, bits and pieces mm. so yeah there's loads of different ways to get stuck into this one yeah. fantastic really? right um, after the break um, Justin is going to sit down with Jonas from Army Painter, who are in the process of introducing a huge, huge update mm. uh, to their paint range, which is incredibly exciting. We've been doing a lot of um, work with Army Painter here. We've used this stuff for years. Their, their primers are the absolute core of anything that we go to paint. But to see this new... Um, the, this new expanded paint range that mm. they've got coming, it just has me and John so excited. So yeah. right after the break, you can sit down with Jonas. In a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on beastofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves, and orcs in this game of mass fantasy combat on beastofwar.com. Hey everybody, I'm joined by Jonas from the Army Painter, and it's time for a bit of an update on what's happening with the new range. So, uh, Jonas, you guys are just back from Essen. How was the show? The show was brilliant. We had um, two hectic days of back-to-back uh, -back meetings with lots of different uh, customers and partners and uh, potential new customers and new partners and stuff. And the big thing for us was obviously to show our new retail rack. The retail rack is a standalone rack that goes into all the shops worldwide, hopefully, mm -hmm. combining sprays, quick shade, brushes, and of course, all the new 124 war paints. Yeah, now th this new paint range, this this is you guys going, by the way, have a look at all of this paint that we can do, all these amazing colours and shades we can do, and your effect paint as well. Uh, yeah. Can you give us a, a little idea of, you know, how did it actually come to be that the, the range has now just went skadoosh and just went explosive? <laughs> skadoosh, a good word. Um, well, for a while we've had a, a smaller range. Our, our current range of war paints has a hundred. No, sorry, has a forty-two paints in it, mm. and that's your basic paints. That's what most painters will ever need. Mm. You got all of the ones that has a color primer has a matching war paint. Mm. Um, 
Since then, we've added paints in our various license sets. We've done some license sets for Cool Mini and Up for the Sombicide mm -hmm. projects and also for the others. And yeah. slowly, we've increased the um, amount of wall paints out there. And also, we've had a lot of feedback from gamers saying, oh, I don't want to mix. I want to have my highlight palette down. Mm. So basically, we've listened to all that feedback and gone back and made what we think is now a complete range. Mm. It's not um, stupidly big, but it's also a lot bigger than 42. So we ended up with 124. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about that is that it gave us a reason to go in and add paint to that uh, we, we need it for various reasons. We've added a few extra metallics. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, a paint called rough iron, which is very similar to the old game switch of tin bits, mm -hmm. which is, might not be a best seller, not suitable in a very small range, but it really has its uses, and we're very happy to have that paint in there. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, like, uh, you, you've sent me through some images here, and it's it's one of the things I like about Army Painter is because you have those, those sort of jump-off points. So, like, there are, like, three key ones here. So you've got your, your base starter set, which is, yeah. you know, lots of basic colors that you're going to need. So you've got some black in there, you've got some white, you've got some flash tones, you've got red, you've got yellow, you've got green, you've got your blue. And it just gives you a really, really nice, easy part to actually jump in and basically get stuck into your painting. Yeah, this is actually, uh, we call it starter paint set. Mm. It is for anybody who's just picked up a box of plastic soldiers mm -hmm. and a glue and a clipper, and now they want to get painted. So here we got 10 colors, that's your absolute basic. There's one metallic, there's the strong tone wash, and there is eight normal colors. That is your starting point. Mm -hmm. um, and that set hasn't actually changed. We've got a facelift with the new paints and the, the, the new imagery, but it's exactly the same as the current starter paint that we have in our range. Hmm. All right, well, uh, jumping up to the, the next one, which is your mega paint set, which I have to say, I have looked at this on the shelf more than once and been incredibly tempted to just go, mm, that's nice. I could use that. And that's actually been our simply most popular set we ever do. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to have 42 paint in there mm -hmm. and three brushes. And basically for, I would say, 99% of all gamers, this is all the paint you need. This is, this is the, you know, yeah. the complete set, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually gone and make the set, we think, a little bit better. There's now 50 paints in the, in the set, only one brush. Again, the feedback has been paying, saying, oh, I need more paint. Yeah. And we've gone around and tweaked a little bit. So we've actually looked at the new range of 124 and simply picked out the best 50 paints out there. Mm -hmm. So in here, you'll find all the, um, all the matching raw paint from our 26 color primers. They are in there. And you got a selection of uh, washers and some metallics and of course more normal acrylics. Mm -hmm. So these 50 paints you've got in there is, is simply a super selection. Yeah. And for I would say most gamers, especially most army painters, this is really all the colors you need. Unless you want to branch out and all of a sudden you're painting maybe a certain faction and you go and pick out one or two extra colors from your range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have the, the big one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ultimate a... army painter paint set, in my opinion, which is huge with 124 paints in it. Yeah. So here we go. We know we have a lot of hardcore fans out there who want the complete range. And we've gone out for this Christmas only. It's going to be a limited edition set. Mm -hmm. Come January, there won't be any left. And that is basically one of each of the new paints and old paints. So all 124 paints are there, including five uh, walking brushes so uh, it's a bit of a silly set it's four kilos of uh, sexy uh, paint set here um, <laughs> it's it's massive and yeah. um it's a little bit silly unless you are a hardcore veteran painter um but it's it's lovely i uh, if i didn't have it already here at my desk i would definitely want one on my, on my christmas list yeah no 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 tr trust me i i can see at least you know more than a few war gamers turning to their missus going look i want something for christmas you know just just, just, just you know just maybe one of these might be nice you know just just Thanks. under the tree nicely wrapped up you know please 
yeah. <laughs> who, who wants the, the soft uh, parcel with uh, a sweater in there when you can get one of these uh, heavy boxes? <laughs> um, obviously, it's a good deal. You save about 20% of the recommended retail price, yeah, yeah. Uh, as you would expect from a, from a big set like this. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, I'm I'm looking forward to actually having a look at some of the new paints because I mean, like, you I mentioned the effects paints already, but having those in there is going to be a really, really nice, you know, addition to the army paint range for the actual things you can do once you're actually working on your forces and stuff. Like, one of the hardest things I've ever tried to do is actually find a really, really good, decent blood effect, and now in this range, I'm going to have that, which is great. Yeah, but we, the effect paints in in a way it sort of covers all the all the odd colors out, if you like, all effects. So there is um, there is the gloss paint. We've got the glistening blood, as mm-hmm. we just talked about. We're also doing a, a, a mud color and a disgusting slime. And then we also got a very matte color, which we call um, dry rust, which is for rust effects, which is obviously an orangey brown color. Mm-hmm. And then we got a couple of very varnishes. We've got the gloss varnish and the anti-shine matte varnish. Mm-hmm. And then we got two new uh, additions to our range, which are mixing mediums. So we do um, a normal one, which is called War Paints Mixing Medium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we also do a thinner one, which is designed to uh, thin down or dilute your uh, quick shade wash shoes. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I will say the, the quick shade washes. Now, is this the, the ink sets that come in the range or the, the old school dip? Because I know the makeup of those two products is very different. Yeah. So, uh, and, and uh, you're not the only one to, to uh, get a little bit confused. We got the uh, old fashioned tin, the, 100, the 250 milliliter dip. Yep. It's a polyurethane uh, pigment and varnish, and that is a, a dip. You need to go outside, or you can either dip it or you can brush it on, but it basically is a quick shade at shading in one go. Mm-hmm. It takes 24 to 48 hours to harden, and then you need to anti shine it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the smaller pots, these ones, yes, it's called quick shade washes, and they come. Uh, you can recognize them with the red lids, and these are your regular ink washes that is um, from other other paint ranges. Mm-hmm. So these ones, uh, you add on. You basically shape your model like normal, uh, but we recommend you go back and highlight it because these they will generally tone down the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they've been extremely popular, and because. They are matching to what we do with the Army Painter Technique. Mm. We have a strong tone, a soft tone, and a dark tone, just like in the big tent. Mm. Even though it's a different product, they're the same color, yeah. and you can use it. Sometimes you want to maybe go out and dip your whole army, but then the next day you're doing the general, and you can just use the, the quick shade wash, the yeah. ink, uh, for just one model. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you, you also have the, the color tones in there as well, which I always find fantastic. At the minute, I'm working through some, uh, some drop fleet, some scourge, and I'm using a uh, oh, what's colors? I'm using necrotic flesh base, then I'm going in with the soft tone, and then I'm actually re-highlighting it, and it it just looks fantastic. It gives a really sort of old rotten flesh look for these old ships, which is really yeah. cool. And what we we've uh, currently we have uh, eight different inks, washes, um, but we uh, we're adding a few more. Um, we've uh, had the flesh wash that was a late addition, so it's sort of not been quite part of the range. Uh, that's going in, of course. Uh, we got a few lighter brown, and then we also got a, a brown greenish uh, wash that is called military shader. It's perfect for your sort of army green tanks or uh, World War II regiment or that sort of thing. Awesome, awesome. I'll have to let John know about that one because he's, he's never done, but he has a tank on the table in front of him. <laughs> yeah, well, get going. <laughs> All, right. All right, well, uh, Jonas, uh, is there anything else you'd like to cover? I think um, go and go and see for yourself. The paint sets are out for Christmas, so that means they they will be in stores uh, December first. Mm-hmm. Now the individual colours will be uh, available in the racks, and that is in stores from February first. Um, and we've tried really to think the range through. If you are an army painter, uh, speed freak, you'll just carry on like you do normal. Mm. Spray, paint, dip, done. That will pretty much be as you know it right now. If you are uh, 
more into traditional high turning, the new range will offer all that for you. So you have your base code, your highlight one, your highlight two, your highlight three. That is now available without having to mix, just like again other other paint companies. So so we now sort of think we can have a complete wall paint range, both for the speed paint type of painters or the veteran, more traditional highlight type of painters. Or like me, I sometimes use one one technique and sometimes the other technique. I think that's the that's the beauty about this hobby is that there is no set way of doing it. It's whatever you prefer. All right, cool. All right, well, uh, Jonas, before we go, how about we give something away? You offer you offer a wee bit of a prize? Well, we uh, we ran a competition a few uh, months ago where uh, all the Beast of War uh, um, users uh, helped us pick out. Um, one of the missing Warpaint's name it was uh, Void Shield Blue was ended up with the name. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot. And there was a lot of really good and some really silly names out there as well. Uh, but that really helped a lot. But now I think we'll just do a more generic uh, prize draw. Uh, and I think we're going to give away the Mega Painters. So that will be your 50 paints and your brush. Uh, and we'll give it away before it's out in the shops. So um, how, do, how do people go... About it. All right, well, guys, uh, tell you what, if you want to enter this competition, get your comments in on YouTube, Facebook, or beastofwar.com in this post. Uh, Jonas, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for making an incredible paint range. Thank you for a cool prize. Guys, we'll move on here and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastofwar.com. In a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on beastofwar.com. That's what's happening with the guys at Army Painter. I am really excited to see this this new sort of three levels of painting type thing they've got going. Yes. You've got your starter set, you've got your mid-range where you've got everything, and then you've got that huge, stupidly big set. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a thing about huge, uh, stupidly big sets uh, in that... You know, uh, let's be honest, okay? I have bought huge, stupidly big sets in in the past, <laughs> GW, and uh, unfortunately they have dried out. But I put most of that down to the pot choice yes. at the time, that liddy pot, yes. rather than the the dropper pot. Yeah. Um, but you know what I'm most excited about with this new range are the possibilities of the shades, mm -hmm. right? The the army painter method for getting stuff fast on the table, yeah, um, is is just so effective. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we've been exploring. If you head on over to Backstage, mm -hmm. last week's XLBS, we're showing off um, what we're calling, what we're dubbing the cell shaded method, okay? Yeah. Which is um, a, an ultra fast approach that we're using for board games. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have so many board games now. And so many of those board games have so many miniatures. And so many of those miniatures are unpainted. <laughs> and so many of those unpainted miniatures are never going to be painted. So, but the problem is, they, they lack a consistency. They lack a, a sense of gravitas and quality on the table. Mm -hmm. So the cell shade method, which we've, uh, which we've been coming up with, is a super fast, super effective, super quick... Fast and quick is the same thing. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> brain fart, brain I'm, in, fart. I'm in the middle of my supers here, so super fast. Super effective and super. Um, what's another word for robust? In other words, um, it, it it protects your minis. It protects your minis, yeah. and it really gives you that sense that the, of of them look like something. Anyway, if you're interested, check out last week's XLBS for backstagers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll be talking a little bit more about it in, in future episodes. Right, time for the kickstarters. Yes. And boy, oh boy, do we have some Kickstarters for you. Mm. Um, kicking off this week, we have a doozy called The Edge mm -hmm. by Awakened Realms. Now, let me just jog your memory. Grab that miniature there. Yeah. Do you remember this bad Aww. boy? Um, oh, do we know the name of this miniature? Yes, because I have it right here. So this is the Angel of Death. Oh, just look at it. Um, I remember whenever we first saw renders and stuff for this miniature, and I, I was just like, oh, it just looks so, so good. Yeah. Well, uh, this is it now in the flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, on Monday morning, or on Monday at some point, Awakened Realms are kicking off their Kickstarter, yes. um, which is for the game The Edge. And we have it here. 
Yes. And Justin, you can uh, you can fill us in uh, a bit about it. Yeah. But before you do, yeah. let's have a look on the screen because we have some of the factions. You can tell us a bit about it as uh -huh. we as we browse around. Right. Ben, feel free to chip in. Yeah, sure. All right, well, the first thing we're seeing here is the actual board layout. Now, we have it on the table, so we won't spend too long on this, but this is showing off some of the beautifully painted stuff that they've done as well, yeah. because there, there are painted versions of this kicking around. But let's kick into the factions. Now, so before up, you get to the factions, right? Yes. What is the general, uh, the general vibe of, of the game? What's the general backstory? Uh, well, from what I can gather so far, I've been having talks with the guys at Awaken Realm, mm. so if I garble this, apologies. But basically, the world has went through sort of a cataclysmic event, right? Yeah. So there was this gigantic pyre crystal, mm -hmm. which was brought down and crushed mm -hmm. and has scattered itself across the world, which is why we have all these little piles of crystals on the board here that you can see, right? Yeah. So this is like little bits of leftovers mm -hmm. from it okay. that you're trying to gather up to power up your abilities and stuff. But mm -hmm. from that, we seem to have demons coming in from another dimension, from a dying world, trying to, you know, save their race. But yeah. they're demons, so, you know, humanity looks at it and goes, that's a demon, that must be evil. Yeah. You know? Uh, you also have the sort of a religious zealot faction who's fighting against them. That's the two we have here in front of us. Mm -hmm. But you have, I think, six factions total that you can be having a play about with. And they've actually got a couple of really cool things. So they've got a compendium of short stories whoop, mm -hmm. and a graphic novel. Ah. Which I really, really like the idea of because so it instantly gives you that sort of dark, gray book. feel of the world. Yeah. So if I actually open this up, you know, you get that sense of. You know, humanity's last stand against the demons the mm. first time they actually fought back and won, which is just really so, cool. So uh, the, the impression that I got was it, it's um, general sci-fi kind of a game, it's but with, with, with sci demons. Sci-fi, steampunky sort of thing. Yeah. You know, so it's it's got some elements of sci-fi in that you have, you know, knights in powered armored suits, but whenever you look at our angel here, Tell me those wings don't look anything but a beautiful piece of steampunk work. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's. It, I'm. I'm still working on getting the full flavor of this game as to where the background is and stuff. But yeah. what I've been focusing on really at the minute is who the factions are and what the mechanics are. Well, right? let's have a look at the factions. So, yeah. first faction up is these guys, the Faceless. So mm -hmm. these seem to be sort of a, a techno organic faction, yeah. which are sort of wild and feral. Because mm -hmm. in the graphic novel, as I was reading through, one of the the knights came up against one of these, and it was just like. Mm. It's faster than the others. Yeah. So these are sort of like, I'm hoping, running wild around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, moving along, we have our the chapter. zealot faction. Yes, yeah. with that, that beautiful angel, mm -hmm. the nice big paladin. So this is your mainstay human faction of the world. And yeah. from the sound of things, everybody's sort of, sort of living under the iron heel the of the church. The art direction of this game is superb. Mm -hmm. Absolutely it is, superb. Yeah. 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 We then move along to the reborn. So this oh, is a, a nature-esque Look at faction. that. These are my favourites. I, I love these guys. It's that little dose of the fantasy added into the sci-fi-ness as well, which yeah. I think is really nice and adds a good contrast to the rest of the other factions out there as well. Yeah, so, so you've got some nice werewolf stuff in there, bison, serpents, you know, the big tree angel. Yeah. Really cool. Oh, that is fabulous. This, I believe, is John's favourite. Uh -huh. So say hello to, I believe this is the Razak. Yeah. And they are just gorgeous, heavy duty, heavy metal, technological style faction. Yeah, and I, oh, just so good, isn't it? Look at the one guy, or there's two guys there on the ends, sort of riding like lightning on the surfboards. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is really, really cool. Uh, we then come to what I like the most is actually the demon faction. Yeah, they have yeah. such weight, such character to them. Mm -hmm. You know, and the idea that yes, they have their own civilization, mm -hmm. but because humanity sees a demon, they think evil. Yes, you know, I'm I'm loving that sort of vibe that I'm getting from them, and then this one actually isn't on the the Kickstarter page. I don't know much about these yet. We've got an exclusive. <laughs> I think so, a little bit. Yeah, but this is the Devgar. So the again, Devgar. it's, it's, it's yeah. a sort of a, a hell warrior sort of look to it. You yeah. Know? Con so. Considering their name, I'm kind of hoping they're going to be towards a dwarven style faction. Had to be dwarves. Had to be dwarves. Because Durgar with the old name for the Norse dwarves and stuff, mm. so it'll be interesting to see if they fit in in some way. But yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I've had an opportunity uh, to to play the game uh, with Justin. Before that, that I yeah, have one more surprise for you. Oh, so I know you like your legacy games, right? I do. And in this game, we actually have a map for playing legacy style. Oh. So there's actually going to be consequences as you fight through each of these areas, winning and losing. That's going to affect how your warbands are put together. So you're uh -huh. going to get bonuses and minuses to it. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has a full legacy mode then? Yes, it does, which mm. I really like. So it's not just facing off against each other and just randomly bashing seven shades of you-know-what yeah. out of each other, uh -huh. which is really cool. 
Awesome. Well, I have had a chance to play it. Now, stay tuned, because we're actually going to do a Let's Play. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, not this week, maybe Monday of next week, but, but uh, hang fire with us. We are going to do a Let's Play with this. But I, I did get a chance to play it, so, uh, to talk, uh, so I can talk to you about the general... Uh, the general vibe of this game and, and how it and how it basically plays. Mm -hmm. So, mm. the purpose of the game is to um, obviously beat your opponent. Yes. Okay, these crystals um, are are crucial mm -hmm. because what you're doing is you're actually as the game progresses, you're trying to gather crystals. So if you can end a turn connected to one of these bases or in base contact with one of these bases of crystals, mm -hmm. uh, if you're the only one. Um, and your opponent hasn't managed to jump in and block it, at the end of your turn, you can actually collect um, a crystal. Yeah, or as many crystals as it says. Yeah, on so this one, this one would give you, I'll just zoom in a little bit there, this would give you one, one crystal. Yeah, and then the brackets tells you how many it actually has to begin with. Uh, but others might give you two crystals yeah, so uh, per, at the end of a turn and so on. Yeah, yeah. Now, the actual characters uh, themselves, um, uh, you activate them. And uh, once you activate them, you can actually spend these crystals mm -hmm. to do all sorts of things with them. Yes. So basically, every stat card has two faces on it. So if we put, bring up this on the camera, so this would be the standard face. And this shift at the bottom, I would spend two crystals. Right. Which character is that there? That's the so Holy Knight. That's the Holy Knight so with the that's hammer. this guy here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, there you can see him. The miniature is, is absolutely fabulous. Yeah, it's really so. nice, really dynamic. But... What I can do is I can spend two crystals, right? To yep. do what they call a shifting. You shift, yeah. So you flip the card over and that changes up your stat lines and stuff. So this is him working himself up into a holy fever. Yeah. And then he gets an extra ability. The stats go up and see at the bottom here it tells you how long it lasts for. So this one lasts to the end of the game. Yeah. But if you grab your guy, which is the big one, Warren. Okay, this guy here. Yeah. So this is the son of Kyber. Yeah. Now I can I can shift him for a cost of one crystal. But at the bottom it says it only lasts till the end of the round. Yeah. So I have to pay that one crystal every round the, mm. that I want to shift them up. Exactly. And even the crystals are very interesting because in the game you have a red crystal mm. and then all the others are blue crystals. Yes. And you can spend a red crystal and the red crystal will go back to your pool yeah. at the end of every turn. Activation. Sorry, at the end of yeah. every activation. Mm -hmm. However, the blue crystals yeah. stay in the spend pool until the end of the turn before exactly. going back. So you've got this real resource management thing and it has a brilliant escalation feel because this is what I found when I was playing with Justin the first, the first couple of terms you know I was uh, I had a handful of uh, ability cards. Mm -hmm. Justin do you want to show off some of the ability uh, cards yeah. there? So Basically the scenario we've got set up everybody starts with three you have a maximum hand size of six yeah. and as you activate a unit you get to draw from its pal. So bring up uh, camera three I think it mm -hmm. is for me. So let's say I activate one of these guys. Yeah. I have this deck, which corresponds to my three guys, but you'll have different ones for different you know, units, and they'll stay here. Yeah, every unit has its own deck. Yeah. yeah. But as I activate it, I have the option of drawing one or two cards from it, mm -hmm. which then go into my hand. Up to a maximum of six. Yes, yeah. which is why you might want to draw only the one card sometimes, mm -hmm. so as not to burn through your deck too quickly. Yeah. And then what these do is they give you abilities. So this one is Courage, which is a reaction. So whenever you attack me, I can spend a crystal and actually get a free attack back at you mm -hmm. before initiative is determined. Yeah. You know, and that comes down into the way the actual combat works for this game as well. Because yeah. the actual gameplay itself is incredibly light, incredibly simple, incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, let's say movement, right? So, your big guy has a move of what? Three? Yep. Now, in fact, I can show you here just exactly what he has. Yeah. So, he has a move of three. Yep. Attack uh, initiative two, defense uh, one, but plus one. Attack plus three. And they're just modifiers to your dice roll. Yeah. And if I shift him, it goes mad. Yeah. Look at that there. And he's attack three, but with a reroll. But his defense goes down slightly. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. I'm blinding you there. <laughs> um, yeah, and the way this actually works for your movement on the tabletop is... So, you see the way you have the big hacks and the little hacks? Yes. If I'm moving this big guy, he's got a movement of three, so he can go anywhere completely within a the big, big hacks, hacks right? Yeah. Whereas if I'm moving a little guy, they have moved two. I can move two big hexes, but then place myself wherever I like within that hex. Ah. So it's, it's very simple. You're not going to be going, okay, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're just going, okay, one, two, and in there. And group. then anywhere within that hex to exactly. give you your so best. It's, yeah. it's, it's a very fast game. You're not having any of those, those speed bumps that you sometimes get in games. Mm. Uh, on top of that, the actual combat system. So let's say these two were having a fight, right? Yeah. So I'll put them under camera here. Mm -hmm. They're having a fight. I've 
decided to rock in, first thing you're going to do, you're going to work out your initiative, right? Yeah. So my character has an initiative of two. Okay. Uh, my character has also got an initiative of two. Right. So the way it works whenever it's even is the attacker always goes first, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, if you have a higher initiative than me and I've went into you on an attack, you will get to attack first. After that, it's a 1d6 roll plus mm -hmm. the modifier that's on your stat card. Done. Well, let's do it then, if it's as simple as that. All right. Okay, All right. so <laughs> I have I have a plus three. Yeah, now I've said I have initiative two, so I'm saying he's triggered. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so I've got an attack of two, plus two to my roll, plus a re-roll. Okay, so you go first. Uh, two. You're going to re-roll that? Uh, yes. Okay. Six. Oh, brute. Absolute git. So okay, I have I have a plus three no, to no, my no, roll. That's your attack. Oh, I, I have to roll my defense first. Yeah. Oh, defense too, and I had because I'd buffed him, I had zero defense. If I'd left him alone, yeah. I would have got plus one to my defense. Yeah. So that removes a win from me. Yeah. However, had I actually beat that defense, I would have got a free attack back. You would have got the swing back, yes, mm. but it, that only happens once in a combat. And the way yeah. your actions work in the turn, you activate someone, you can move and attack, or you can attack and move. Or you can just move. Well, that's your basics. Mm. Where it gets really interesting is as the game progresses, you feel, you get this sense of escalation mm. because you're you're uh, you're roaming around trying to position yourself to do some damage to your opponent, but also to do some damage and then maybe slink off and connect with one of the uh, one of the, the areas, pools, yeah. uh, one of the crystal pools. Yeah. Um, at the end of the turn, you're gathering them, gathering them up. Mm. And what I found was, because I'd actually managed to gather up quite a lot of crystals, and because when you spend them, you're not actually getting rid of them permanently, they, they come back in, mm. you start to get this, this growing sense of power. Yeah. So that towards the end of the game, you can actually start to do some epic stuff, provided mm. you've been sensible with drawing your cards and you haven't burned mm. through them. Because... If you if you find that you have a handful of cards that you can't use, you're going to have to discard them. But when you discard them, that's them out of the game. Yep. Now, it doesn't do you any harm other than the fact that it just leaves you that you can't do cool stuff that you yep. might have needed later on. But I do like the idea that it's these cards that are giving you those cinematic moments. Yeah. It's, how they, it's a very clean way to build them in. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at your hand as your opponent's going, going, hmm. augmented charge, yeah, let's go with that. So activate Holy Knight, get a free attack, and instead of its uh, assault, you add a crystal to its attack. I haven't yeah. actually figured out what that does yet, but I'm sure it's cool. It's one of the things that actually came across when I was looking through the uh, Kickstarter draft page that, that Justin just mentioned there is that what they've tried to do with the, all of the abilities and everything in the game is to make it feel cinematic and narrative. So it's not just sort of adding like a couple of plus ones here and there. They're actually describe, describing something really cool and sort of adding a little bit more to what your model is doing on the tabletop. Yeah. I thought it was pretty nice, especially since it's a board game. So it sort of elevates a little bit above the sort of, you know, abstract level towards something a bit more meaningful, I think, which is pretty good. So. Well, one yeah. of the things that they've, they've definitely spent a lot of time doing is um, is working on the background of the game. There is a there is a, a a novel of short stories there. Yeah, yeah. There's the graphic novel. You know, they they want you to feel absorbed uh, yeah. into the game. Uh, and it, it there's is a lot adult, of work. It's an adult themed world. I will say that right now. Yeah. There there is harsh language in here. That's okay, okay Justin. That's okay. We can take it. We can take it. <laughs> actually, one other thing I have that I wanted to show off. I actually have one of the the extra minis. So this isn't for either of these factions, but mm -hmm. this is for. Uh, one of the other ones that we've seen, and I just wanted to show him off as well, because look at him. He's a monster. He is a monster. Yeah. Uh, look at the weapon. Ah. I'm really loving the look of these. Yeah, it, it's so far, uh, everything I've seen uh, seen about the game, it plays well. Do you know what it's going to be great for? Mm. Organized play. Oh, yeah. Because there's a, there's a, there, there's no... There's no loose ends that we can feel in this game. Mm -hmm. It very much feels like it's going to suit the organized play environment. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And with the, with the collection of the resources and stuff like that, you're going to get that sense of the, the build-up as, uh, as the game progresses. Yeah, but really interesting. The other in this. thing I love as well is the actual scoring mechanic they have for when units actually pass away. Yes. So basically, the way this works is, on your cards you have this many shields, right? Mm -hmm. So if I kill this character, I've got two shields there, yep. so I will gain two victory points going across the way here, right? Correct, yeah. However, if you kill someone back, it actually has that nice elastic band feel of where it's yeah. going from one side it's, to the it's other. It's a very dreadful 
a, yes. a very dreadball kind of a thing yes, where yes, yes. It, it's kind of roaming up and back and down and mm -hmm. it's it, it has a really good feel to it mm -hmm. also in terms of activation they've got some real, really interesting mechanics if you have uh, if we have the same victory points and we have the same number of crystals Dice. Um, we just do a dice roll to see who gets mm -hmm. the activation in, in any given turn. Yeah. However, if you have more victory points than me, I get the, 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 the initiative yeah. and the uh, activation. Yeah. Or if you have more crystals than me, yeah. I get the initiative well, and the activation. If you're tied on victory points, I believe, and you mm -hmm. have more crystals than me, I get to go first, or vice yeah. versa. Victory points come first, then crystals, mm -hmm. then dice off. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. there you have it. It's one, of the, it's one of the interesting things in this game, actually, that I should point out, is that while there are sometimes games out there that do these big miniatures and then they forget about the game or the, they they create the board game but then forget about the miniatures, they seem to have tied both things together quite nicely with this one. Yeah. One of the things that um, they were talking about with this is that one the author behind this and the creator is actually Michael Orask, I think his name is, right. um, who has done work on Nurishima Hex, which is an absolutely huge board game, yeah. appears in top tens all over the place, and he's also done the recent game Cry Havoc as well, so mm -hmm. they've actually got someone with a real pedigree behind them in terms of the board gaming and the mechanics and stuff as well, so well, that, that be interesting to see how it comes the tightness together. of the rules, Ben, because yeah. I was quite taken by that, and that was why I'd immediately had that organised play I'm not talking necessarily about competitive play, but just you know, getting together um, on your your Friday nights or whatever at your club or your store. Mm -hmm. You know, you you get to you get together. You can play out your mini tournaments or your mini leagues yeah. and things like that. It had yeah. that feel of a tightness about it that that, yeah. that, that lends itself well to that. Mm -hmm. Right, we are I mean, going the, the, to. Sorry, the, the thing that Justin had mentioned, sorry there, about the campaign mode and that legacy thing, I think really yeah. adds into that feel of uh, sort of playing it over a number of different weeks or something with a gaming club. So, yeah. But, yes, it looks, looks really good. I'm really interested to see where this one goes. Yeah. Next step for what we've got here is it's going to go to John, who's going to do the cell shade <laughs> method on this stuff mm -hmm. to get it ready for us to record a playthrough for you guys. So, as you can see, a let's play on it. Believe me, it's worth checking out. Mm -hmm. Kickstarter goes live on Monday. Be sure to uh, mark that in your calendars if this is your if this is your bag, and go along and have a look at it. Okay, we've got two more quick kickstarters to tell you guys about, and then we're calling it a day. Uh, first up, Ben, we have Moonstone. This is a quirky little Kickstarter that I am absolutely loving the look of. Yeah, so this is one's by Goblin King Games, and they'd previously been on Kickstarter to um, sort of bring to life two of their miniatures. And we had a quick look at them a, a, a little bit, a little while ago, a couple of months ago. But now they're actually bringing it all together into creating their proper skirmish game. Yeah. So this is for this is actually meant to be played with potentially more than just two players, so a proper multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. goes between two and four, and it's oh, a little skirmish wow. game in 32mm scale, yeah. and you only use about three or six miniatures per side as well. And the big thing that sort of is drawing people to this world is this sort of whimsical, over-the-top fairy tale nature to everything. And you'll see it as you look through a lot of the different miniatures so and artwork that you see here. Characterful. Yeah. The, yeah. the the character in the sculpts, like it, technically, let, let's let's be honest here. Technically, we're seeing a lot of technically excellent sculpts these days. Mm. Okay. Yes. With yeah. the CAD and stuff like that, you know, we're seeing beautiful board game sculpts. Mm -hmm. um, one piece sculpts that are today are rivaling the multi-part kits that we had yep. even two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the character, the, the, the expressions, um, look at the expression on that little boy's face, uh, the squire. <laughs> Isn't that just fabulous? And then also, if you scroll down just a little bit further there, Justin, the flintlock, right? Mm. The, the entire body expression. Just the, the quirkiness in the stance of his body and the, the way he holds himself, mm. it, it just it just screams, I'm 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 quirky, I'm I'm odd, I'm I'm interesting. <laughs> I, I absolutely yeah. adore the art direction yeah. in this. It, it for and for yeah. a small with it being a small game, mm. it's almost like a no brainer to have in your collection. As as one as one to to bring out. The only thing it, it, it reminds me a little bit of Smog. Smog mm. had a character, but in a more elaborate kind of a way. Yeah. Whereas this has character in a more characterful kind of way, if you know what I mean. It, yeah, I know exactly. It is mean. it's really cool. Mm. Uh, ben, yeah. it, it is about eighteen days or so left to go. Mm. It is funded. Um, if you enjoy your characterful minis and and something with just mm. that just that little bit of extra 
Um, that's that's definitely one uh, yeah. to go and hop on. The, uh, the the beta rules and stuff are up on their Kickstarter page. So if you're interested in trying it out before you pick up any of the models or anything like that, you can go and give it a go. So yeah, some really interesting things going on with this one mechanically. But yeah, go and check it out. Okay, cool. finally we have one that Justin picked out for us this week, and that is the portable painting station. It's got about thirty days left to go by War Mage Games. Mm. Justin, you've been jumping up and down a bit about this one. I love the design of this because one of the things I hate about Painting at home. Mm -hmm. My station is messy as all hell. Right, okay. <laughs> and I do like to actually bring my paints out and about with me. Say I'm going out to visit my mum for a few days. Yeah, or even coming in here. There's times yeah. where you bring stuff into the studio on, on, on the weekends yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's trying to get it all loaded. So this is actually designed perfectly to actually get your stuff from A to B and actually get you painting stuff. So, I mean, like, you've even got it designed. It's an MDF set. Yeah. It's designed to have a, a nice white light just up and over your workstation. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a few different sizes of it that you can actually go with. Yeah. And then it all just packs down. So it packs all down, just packs, packs down. down into something with a carry handle. Yep. That you can then take with you. Oh, done. And there you go. Look at it. Yes. It's fantastic. And then, yeah, like I the, said, you've got the different scales of it here. Yeah. So depending on how much work you're planning to do, you can get it as big or as small as you really want to. Yeah. Ben, what do you think of it? I think it's really great. I mean, the, the thing that really stood out to me is that they've actually done it in two different styles as well. So you've got the one version of it, which is all based on the Games Workshop paint. So mm -hmm. that's what you primarily use. Yeah. You can look at it from that side of things. If you use the dropper bottles from the likes of Vallejo and Army Painter, you've got that one as well. And it's the additional sort of extra modules and things you can add in there as well. Like as Justin was saying there, there's the daylight lamp, which is yeah. always useful, especially if you, you know, doing things in sort of darker conditions and stuff. But there's also different places for you to put your models and all bits and pieces as well. So it's effectively that nice way of keeping everything contained for one project. So you could work on, you know, that one set of Space Marines or whatever you're working on, keep it all in one place, get it all painted, and then move on to the next one and stuff. Really good. It, yeah. it does have that sense of being able to pack it up, head to your mates mm -hmm. for the weekend, unpack it, and yeah. then uh, and, or even and, head and to just the club or whatever. Yeah, or into the club. Honestly, yeah. this would be my number one to pick for a Christmas gift for a war gamer this year. Really? Yes. Yeah? I'm, I'm, well, I'm putting the flag down now. Justin, Justin's getting stuck in there early on the Christmas gift list. So, <laughs> hang, on, um, hang on, hang on. Here in the town, they have started putting up the decorations this month. Well, then that's as good a reason as any. Put that uh, on the top of your gifts for a gamer list. Yeah. <laughs> right, guys, look, thank you so much for joining us. Remember uh, that this week we are giving away uh, the Army Painter Mega Paint Set to one lucky winner and the beautiful, beautiful city block from Battle Systems. Remember, we also have more terrain that we're giving away next week and the week after, so for tune in for that. Um, if you want, you can support Beasts of War by becoming a backstager and get a whole additional uh, episode of this show, where we um, it's a little more laid back, it's a little more risque and interesting at times. It is very much in the bar, behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> if you're into it, trust me, you will enjoy it. So come across to Beast of War, sign up as a backstager. Not only will you have fun um, uh, joining us and joining the, the amazing backstage community, but you do help us keep the lights on. It, we, couldn't, we couldn't do any of this, any of the free content. Nothing would be possible without the support of our backstagers. They are the lifeblood of what keeps Beast of War ticking, keeps our servers running, keeps the cameras running and everything running is only because of our backstagers. Um, if you weren't there, we wouldn't be here. And let's face it, the world would be a darker place. I'd like to think so. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. Happy gaming. We'll see you next week. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices, and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastsofwar.com. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastsofwar.com.